today we shall talk about gunshot residues their production location as well as testing gsr stands for gunshot residues which are also called firearm discharge residues gsr can be created by burning of the primer or when the bullet or projectiles get rubbed in the barrel with the barrel parts or in the barrel parts at the same time these are gases which are produced by many of the propellants and these gases are also called gunshot residues apart from this there are inorganic metallic particles consisting of aluminum antimony barium and lead in addition to these metals sometime we find that the vapors of lead from the bullet base as well as copper and zinc are also detected as part of the gsr or gunshot residues these particles are located at many places the most important ones are the target where the terminal ballistic starts and the shooter who has fired the firearm the shooter has gunshot residues on his hands on the both side the palmer side and the opposite side as well as on his body he may have it on its face or on arms and also on his clothes so far as target is concerned if it is a human body the gsr can be found on the clothes or on the body of the victim depending upon the range of firing these are located at many more places with which these particles come into contact especially near the firing range also they are light particles and may be found in the air apart from this they can be found at the intermediate target as well once they are located they need to be tested the testing can be done in two ways the instrumental method of testing and chemical method of testing in this discussion we will limit ourselves to this chemical analysis of gsr this can be done by grease test harrison and gilroy test tewadi test marshall test hand washing test as well as hand swabs which we may take from the shooter's hand in addition to this we shall be discussing in the next uh, paper about the instrumental method of testing after studying this module you shall be able to know about gunshot residue about the collection of gsr samples from the shooter's hand for analysis about the chemical test for the identification of gsr introduction to gunshot residues gsr chemical particles which are frequently referred to as firearm discharge residues are also present as gunshot residues gsr gsr is produced due to burning of powder rubbing of bullet with barrel parts and explosion of priming compounds gsr particles may be found as inorganic elements organic compounds or gases gsr particular may be found on the target and when the target is a human being 
they may exist on the body of the victim and on his clothes depending on the range of firing and other factors. GSR particle may be found on the hands of the shooter, inside the body of the victim as well as at some distances from the place of firing depending on firing range. In cases of suicide, GSR particles can be found on the body of the shooter as well as on his clothes. GSR particles may be found in the barrel and chamber of the weapon as well as on the outside of barrel. GSR particles may be found in the air. Presence of GSR particles has even been reported in the excreta of the shooter. In India, the new primer composition being used is Let's Definite 32.42% Antimony sulfide 13.17%, barium nitrate 27 to 37%, PETN 4 to 6%, tetracine 3 to 5%, aluminium 6 to 8%. Thus, the elements present in the GSR would be lead, antimony, barium, and aluminium. In addition to above elements produced from the primer, we may have contribution from other sources. Some particles of plain lead which has vaporized from the base of the bullet, copper, and zinc particles from the inside surface of the cartridge case. Collection of samples for GSR analysis The practice for sample collection for GSR analysis is easy. Generally, a 1 into 1 cm strip of double-sided adhesive tape fixed against a thin acetate band. The acetate band allows the adhesive surface to be conveniently operated. During the sample collection, the skin must be stretched as much as possible to ensure that any GSR particles which may have hidden within the folds of the skin or inside the hair follicles are exposed. It is important to cover the sample area at least three times even if the adhesive has lost its stackiness. The adhesive is quite soft and particles can still be pressed into the surface even if there is no apparent adhesiveness left. It is also important to be consistent in the number of times the area is covered to ensure consistency for interpretation of the results. Chemical test for GSR identification In cases where a SEM is not available, the test described can still be used. Excessive caution should be used with the interpretation of any results obtained from these tests as none of them are specific. At best, the results could be presumptive and at worst only indicative. Sodium rhodizonate test the test is carried out by firmly pressing a clean filter paper, lightly moistened with 0.1N hydrochloric acid, HCl, over the bullet hole. The filter paper is then dried using a hot air blower and carefully spotted with a saturated solution of sodium rhodizonate in water. The filter paper will eventually take on an orange color from the sodium rhodizonate. The filter paper is then warmed once again with the air blower but not dried. The solution of 0.1 NHCl is then lightly spotted or preferably sprayed onto the paper until the orange color disappears. If there are any lead particles present, they will remain as a purple coloration. After spotting with the point N HCl solution and noting or photographing any purple colored spots, a filter paper is held over a solution of 880 ammonia solution. A filter paper is placed into a mildly alkaline condition, preferably about pH 8. This will remove the purple coloration due to lead and then placed it in a condition 
where the sodium rhodizonate will react with any barium present to give a red brown coloration alternatively the filter paper can be spotted with dilute ammonia solution but this tends to dilute the result leading to difficulties in identifying the color change the sodium rhodizonate test can also be used for the detection of barium although it is not as sensitive as when used for lead this test can be used in conjunction with the test for lead giving a more specific identifier of gsr walker test for nitrites this is used for the detection of nitrites in the partially burnt and unburnt propellants in this technique a photographic paper is desensitized into hypofixa after that the paper is immersed in a solution of 5% to naphthalamine 4 aid disulfonic acid then it is air dried a cloth wetted with 20% acetic acid is placed under the clothing under test the photographic paper is placed on top and covered with a piece of dry cloth pressure is applied with a hot iron set at warm for 5 minute any bright red spot which appears indicates the presence of nitrite compounds it should be noted that many compounds other than nitrocellulose propellants can give a positive reaction example urine face powder fertilizers grice test this is identical to the walker test except for the main reagent which is naphthyl amine instead of 2 naphthyl amine 4 disulfonic acid this reagent gives orange spots once again this test is mainly used for detection of propellant particles in range of firing estimations marshall test the desensitized photographic paper is soaked it in 0.5% solution sulf analic acid for 10 minutes then dried this is then soaked in a 0.5% solution of n alpha naphthyl ethylene diamine hydrochloride in methanol for 2 minute then again dried a cloth wetted with 20% acetic acid is placed under the clothing under test the photographic paper is placed on top and covered with a piece of dry cloth pressure is applied with a hot iron set at warm for 5 minute a positive indication for nitrites will appear as purple spots on a purple background it is rinsed in warm water to remove background color if then rinsed in methanol the spots will turn orange this test is mainly used for detection of propellant particles in range of firing estimations Tewari test 1 g of antazoline hydrochloride 2 n benzyl aniline methylamine azoline hydrochloride is dissolved in 50 ml of water 45 ml of concentrated hcl is added and stirred until the white precipitate dissolved a filter paper soaked in acetone and pressed on target it is then air dried and sprayed heavily with the prepared antazoline solution nitrite compounds will register a positive reaction as deep yellow spots this test is mainly used for range of firing estimations by visualization of propellant particles lung reagent this was the original dermal nitrite test used for the proof of firing a weapon originally the reagent consisted of a 0.25% solution of diphenylbenzidine in concentrated sulfuric acid this reagent was sprayed onto paraffin casts of suspect's hand 
and any nitride particles present which include nitrocellulose would give a deep blue coloration. Diphenylbenzidine is however carcinogenic and has been replaced with diphenylamine which also gives a deep blue coloration to nitrites. The problem with this test is that so many everyday chemicals for example fertilizer, urine, makeup etc can give a positive reaction with this reagent that it is no longer used for the identification of GSRs on hand. Harrison and Gilroy reagent Whereas this reagent is really intended for the identification of GSR on hand swabs it can be used just as well for the range of firing estimations once the particles have been removed from the garment. The photographic paper method of lifting the residues from the clothing is used but dilute HCl must be used instead of acetic acid. It is then air dried then sprayed with a 10% solution of triphenyl methyl arsonium iodide in alcohol. An orange coloration is positive for antimony. Then it is dyed and sprayed with a saturated solution of sodium rhodizonate. Red spots are positive for barium or lead. When dried and sprayed with dilute HCl, purple spots are positive for lead. If the spots are then exposed to a 35% ammonia solution, any particles containing barium will give a red coloration. Dithiooxamide DTO test. This test detects copper and nickel and can be utilized for the determination of bullet entry and exit holes for fully jacketed gilding material, copper, zinc and cupronickel CUNI bullets. It can also detect the presence of cobalt, although this is currently of no significance in forensic firearms examination. With DTO, copper produces a very dark green coloration nickel, a pink to violet coloration and cobalt a brown coloration. The presence of blood can however give a false negative result. The reagent must be freshly prepared from 0.2 gram of DTO in 100 ml of ethanol. The ammonium hydroxide is 20 ml of ammonium hydroxide in 50 ml of distilled water. A filter paper moistened with the ammonium hydroxide is pressed onto the bullet hole. Gentle heat via a hair dryer can be applied which will enhance the transfer. Place 3 drops of the DTO solution to the area in contact with the bullet hole. A dark greenish grey reaction constitutes a positive reaction for copper. A blue violet coloration constitutes a positive reaction for nickel. Precautions to be taken during GSR examination. Plastic gloves should be worn by the evidence technician when taking the hand wiping. The cotton swab is moistened with 2 or 3 drops of acid solution. About 20 seconds of swabbing is recommended and important per swab. Each area should be swabbed twice. The four areas to be swabbed are the backs of both hands and the palms of both hands. On the back of the hand, the radial aspect of the forefinger, the dorsal aspect of the thumb and the skin web between must be swabbed. On the palm of the hand, the palmer aspect of the forefinger and thumb together with the base of the forefinger and thumb and skin web between is swabbed. Clothing submitted for gunshot residue examination should be carefully handled, air dried and wrapped separately in paper. Clothing with blood must be air dried and labeled biohazard on the inner and outer container. The date time, location, collector's name, case number and evidence number should be on the container. Summary GSR is produced due to burning of powder, rubbing of bullet with barrel parts and explosion of priming compounds. GSR particular may be found on the target 
and when the target is a human being, they may exist on the body of the victim and on his clothes, depending on the range of firing and other factors. GSR particles may be found in the barrel and chamber of the weapon as well as on the outside of barrel. Chemical tests are not confirmatory but can be used for preliminary identification of GSR in a scene of crime.